Hello class, welcome to the final segment in lecture five. And all we'll be doing in this segment is just looking at sort of an exercise which will check your understanding. And then of course, looking at the solution to follow. So just like the previous exercises, I'll just read the question out to you. And then I'll ask you to pause the video and attempt to solve the exercise yourself. So determine the Coriolis force for an air parcel moving northward at 10 meters per second at Norman's latitude, 35 degrees north. What cardinal direction is the Coriolis force directed? So two parts to this question. And I'll go ahead and ask you to pause the video, take about five to 10 minutes and attempt to come to an answer. So hopefully you've got an answer and hopefully the solution that you have looks something like what you're about to see on the screen. So again, good place to start is just to get sort of a visual representation of what the problem has for us. So we have a wind that's moving due north, blowing from south to north. So our wind vector will look something like this. It's pointing from south to north. And remember what we said about Coriolis force. Coriolis force acts to the right of an object's velocity vector. So we would expect the Coriolis force to be pointing due east. So that already answers one part of the problem, but it would be nice to get some mathematical substantiation to that assessment. So that's what we're going to do, but this is just to sort of get our bearings. Since we're in the northern hemisphere, we expect this Coriolis force to be pointing to the east. So if we get an answer that is not pointing to the east, then we know that we've made a mistake somewhere. So again, that's just the value a picture can have. It can show you whether your answer that you, the mathematical answer that you get makes any sense at all. So a good place to start would probably be to calculate the Coriolis parameter itself, since we're only concerned about the horizontal plane, that is the x and y directions or the zonal and meridional directions. So that would be a good place to start and is to calculate the Coriolis parameter. So it would just be two times Earth's angular velocity, which is two pi radians over 86,400 seconds, and then times the sine of our latitude. And if we evaluate that out, we get 8.36 times 10 to the minus fifth radians per second. Now we can go ahead and actually go calculate the Coriolis force. So again, we can make some simplifications here. So since our wind is acting only in the northerly directions, so it's blowing from south to north. That means that we can completely neglect this j-hat term because there is no zonal component in the wind. Since that's what, that's what this letter U represents, there's no zonal component. That's just zero, so we can completely neglect this j-hat component. So just simply plugging in the value that we get up here, the Coriolis parameter times v, which is the velocity of our wind or the speed of our wind vector. And if we evaluate all that out and plug it into a nice fancy calculator, we get that the Coriolis force is 8.36 times 10 to the minus fourth newtons per kilogram in the positive I hat direction. So that does in fact point in the easterly direction or in the, I should say in the, in the just points toward the east. Now you might have, there might be a little bit of a point of confusion here that I'll go ahead and clarify. Here I said newtons per kilograms. That is in fact the same thing as meters per second squared. So if you've got 8.36 times 10 to the minus fourth meters per second squared, those are the correct units. It's just a slightly different way of a, uh, a slightly different way of expressing it. The reason why it shows newtons per kilogram is because all the forces that we worked with are mass normalized. So that means that their units would be. So that means since they're mass normalized, that would be units of force divided by units of mass, which would be newtons divided by kilograms. So that's where this. That's where this unit newtons per kilogram comes from. It just comes from the fact that we're working with mass normalized forces, which means force over mass, which is newtons over kilograms. So hopefully that's the answer that you got. That's going to do it for the fifth lecture. And in the next lecture, we will be covering the geostrophic balance and also some topics related to friction. So with that, I will see you all in the next lecture.